Hello everyone, this is Mitch, and welcome to episode 3 of my Let's Play series of Kerbal Space Program. So starting this episode, I'm going to have every episode kind of in two parts. So for this one, I'm going to show you what I've been doing in between episodes. Since last time we made Orbit, I've done a few things to uh, scrounge up some science from basic orbit around Kerbin. And I've unlocked a few science nodes that I want to show you, as well as you can notice here, I'm going to spend extra science right here, right now, to unlock another node. And then we are going to get ready to go to the Mun, Moon, Moon, Mun, Moon, something like that, however you want to call it, uh, and or pronounce it, whatever. Anyways, so, for the science, this is what it looks like. So... Since last time, I've unlocked this node, basic science for the batteries, uh, the science junior, and the uh, experiment storage units, mostly. I mean, not that I'm not going to use the other parts, but more importantly for these parts. I've also unlocked uh, advanced rocketry here for really all the parts. And I've done enough uh, experiments in space to unlock this one, fuel systems, mostly for this tank right now, although these tanks are going to be very useful later on, and of course the external fuel duct. So here we go, unlocked. And now we are going to make a vehicle to go to the moon. So this is the new vehicle I made to uh, gather science from around Kerbin. So, as you can see, it's quite different from the uh, previous vehicle we had. And it's also got kind of a name. <laughs> so, how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, the first mission is going to be only a flyby, maybe a stop in orbit. But we're not going to land right now. So, we don't really need this part. The pod here, however, is just fine. We've got the Science Junior. If I open the service bays here here's what we got we've got a battery pack two mystery goos thermometer barometer underneath we have a heat shield science junior we've got parachutes which are sufficient to land this thing safely and now we're going to attach a new module to send it to the moon. So here's how I like to do it. I like it to be flush like that. So now what's it going to require? So we are going to jump back to the Delta V map. So here is the Delta V map. So obviously we're still going to need the 3400 Delta V to get from the ground on Kerbin to low orbit. And then we are going to need an extra 860 to get an encounter with the moon. And we're going to plan an extra 310 to uh, get a low moon orbit, because why not? And we should probably plan another 310 to get out from low moon orbit back into Kerbin orbit. So all of this roughly adds up to a 5,000 delta V. So how are we going to do this? Well, we've got our decoupler here. This is all that's going to actually land. And we need roughly a 1,600 delta V to go from low curb in orbit to moon orbit. So this is, this is perfect, actually. We could even lower the amount of fuel in there just a smidge, because anyway, this is, this is extra weight, and we won't need it. So this is perfect. This is our lunar ascent vehicle and return stage, basically which is going to decouple when we enter the atmosphere, and then we have the parachutes. Okay, so now we're going to add another stage <coughs> to get us from the ground to orbit, and probably two stages. So, since we have a 30 parts limit and a 18 tons limit, 
this is why the larger fuel tanks are especially useful, because sure we can get as much fuel by using two of these tanks, if you look at the amounts, if you look at this one it's exactly twice, but that means we can get as much fuel as with these two of these tanks by using one of these, which makes it easier on the parts count. So there we go, one like that, two like that, and let's go with three, zoom out, move the vehicle up to have access to the bottom, and I like to use two thuds for my smaller rockets for uh, an ascent stage because it gives you a bit more thrust than using a Reliant, but it also gives you gimbling. And if you look at the engine ISP at sea level, it's slightly more efficient. Not so much in space, but for an initial stage, this is great, this is perfect. Plus, it's just barely, if we move this, no, it's 1 ton point 8, and this is 1.25, so it's pretty good. It's a pretty good uh, launch change configuration. So, what does it look like? Ground level is barely gets off the ground, but it will. <clears throat> so maybe we want to cut the amount of fuel here a little bit. Do this. Now it safely gets off the ground with a respectable thrust to weight ratio. And it's got a fair amount of delta V. So now we only need to uh, get the extra oomph to get us from high atmosphere and into orbit. So about a thousand extra delta V. So how are we going to do this? Well, there are a few options. We could probably use solid fuel boosters to uh, just get the extra oomph. Might be a little difficult. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use um, liquid fuel boosters, basically. Two of them should be plenty. So go like this. Take the large tanks again, line them up roughly, like this. I like to make my rockets nice and equal and even. Let's just do this. And it's overweight. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Oh, it's just barely enough weight as is, so we might want to go for something a little bit more efficient. Let's see. If we remove this... and put a Reliant at the bottom. It's pretty good, and we've got four extra tons to play with. Thumpers are much, much too heavy. Would Ammers be enough? They'd be too much, actually. Another option would be to use our Mooner Ascent and Return stage to actually finish getting us into orbit. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to scrap that entirely, put that there, and use the very efficient Terrier engine. Why I say very efficient? Well, let's see. Vacuum ISP 345. This is much, much, much better than any of the starting engines by a fair amount. So if we do this, how much delta V do we get? See, at even 15 kilometers height, we get a lot more than we need to get into orbit, to the moon, moon, whatever, and back. So if we can, if we can only get this up to 15 kilometers, then we can get this rocket to the moon. 
So let's try this. Decoupler here. Now we don't need two stages separate for that. So there we go. We wait. No, with this one. We decouple the bottom. We light the engine. There we go. And now we just want something to get us off the ground and 15 kilometers high. Too heavy by a bit. Still too heavy. What's that say? At zero kilometer. Yeah, that should be perfect. We get a thousand six hundred here. And if we ditch that 15 kilometers up, we should get the extra. Mm, might be a little close, but. A little bit more. Too much. We could try. We could try. I'm not convinced though. We might need to upgrade the launch pad, honestly. The launch pad is the one that's going to let us take more tonnage into space. So let's see, and let's put a cap behind here, just for aerodynamics reason. Let's see if this will even get us into orbit. It should, it really should. Let's call this the, um, oh, why is it not writing? Okay. They Launcher. Mark 1. Save and let's see if this can get into orbit with sufficient fuel to go to the moon and back. So here we go. Let's watch the fuel. Let's watch the altitude as well because Ideally, we want to get to 15 kilometers altitude before firing the Terrier here. So let's see. Oh, and one thing you want to do if you use this setup to launch is to uh, actually limit the gimbal on the engines because this is why the, rock, the rocket is bouncing like this. The gimbal is too strong. And then the SAS is trying to compensate for it. And it's fighting against the SAS, the gimbal, and the engine. And then you get the wobble on the rockets. Which you don't want, obviously. So looking fairly good. Of course, the higher we go and the faster we're going before we have to change stages, the better. Because that means more fuel to go to the moon and back. We're a good part of the way up. Looks like we'll make 15 kilometers. Yup. Even a bit more. Good, good. Ideally, we want to have at least over half the fuel left in the other tank before we even try to shoot for the moon. So let's see here what's our apoapsis. It's still fairly low. Going up. I'm not sure if we'll have the fuel we want. 
before leaving for the moon, but uh, we might. We might. So I'm not pointing perfectly prograde because I want to raise the apoapsis even more. Of course, I want it to be above 70 kilometers so we actually make orbit. Although at this altitude, it's not too bad. The atmospheric drag is uh, very low, so everything's still fine. But I'm really worried about the fuel. We really might want to upgrade the launch pad before going for the moon. Almost 60, let's aim a little further up. Almost at half the fuel. We know we don't exactly need half because I reduced the fuel we needed from the smaller tank, so it should be fine like this. Okay, we can actually start going further down, I think. Almost horizontal. So of course this thing is going to go into orbit, that's that's not the question. The, the question is, is it going to get into orbit with enough fuel to go to the moon? And I think it will. Okay, so I'm going to cut the engine a little bit. We are going to get into space in a minute. And firing at the apoapsis is going to be a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to wait a, just a little bit. All right, let's, let's say this is enough because I don't have a very high thrust to weight ratio, so it's going to take some time to accelerate. But we are just about into orbit. Let's wait a little bit more. We're still actually in the atmosphere. All right, space, almost at apoapsis. You can actually tell if you're getting close to apoapsis by watching the vertical speedometer here. So when the speedometer reaches just about zero, you're at apoapsis, basically. So we can see it going down, down, down. And below 10, let's start burning a little bit more. See, right on top. Let's burn a bit more, we don't want to fall back into the atmosphere before we make orbit. And... Periapsis... Periapsis... above 70. So that leaves us with 114 liquid fuel and 140 more 39 oxidizer. Is that going to be enough? Well, we can check. Let's revert the flight. We know this gets into orbit with this much fuel, just about. So let's revert to the vehicle assembly and let's check. Kerbal engineer. Altitude 70, so we're in space, and let's reduce the fuel here. Don't need to cut, well, actually, it's better if you cut both, because that's going to be the weight of your spaceship as well. Uh, we had just about that much, which is 1,220. It's going to be enough. We're probably not going to make a low lunar orbit, but we can actually probably get into orbit and back, which is exactly what we want for our first moon mission, because if we leave here, I've taken the contract already. Uh, if this loads, all right, mission control, active, explore the moon. So we've got our rocket, we've got our contract, do we have more contracts that we want to do? Not really. So we're all ready, so next time we are going to the moon with no upgrades at all to the Kerbal Space Center. 
None. Not even maneuver nodes. No upgrades. Everything is level 1. Alright, so if you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and for feedback, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.